My name is Tony Leach. I am professor of music and music education at Penn State. I received my faculty appointment in 1994, and uh, right now the good news is that I'm actually starting a phase out as far as full-time work is concerned and hope to finish the phase at the end of spring 2017. I did my master's degree here starting in 1977, began in piano performance, and then uh, auditioned into the conducting degree. So I actually graduated in 1982 with that degree and uh, came back to school in 1991 to pursue the PhD and that degree was awarded in 1996. The other part of that is uh, when not, not long after I began my PhD, I also organized Essence of Joy. And so uh, they're now Music 93 and involve undergraduate and graduate students. And so we are in our, fifth, our 25th season. Music has always been um, a big deal with me from the time that I was old enough to ask my mother if I could begin piano lessons and she said no, I was too young. But that didn't mean that the music went away. Uh, she was a church musician and so between doing Sunday morning services and doing uh, choir rehearsals and coaching sessions and she was also studying piano when I was just a, a rug rat. And I kept asking, I kept asking, and I finally stopped asking just before I turned seven. And she said, I think he might be serious. And the, the piano teacher showed up not long after that. And I've been, been doing at least uh, hanging in there with music ever since. Um, so it was kind of, uh, I was just on track to pursue music and in particular, anything that involved singing, anything that involved piano. I like to think of piano as my first love. And, uh, and then ultimately I realized, well, I'm involved with all these people and um, actually began conducting my first choirs at age 12, uh, again through church. And so by the time I, I began my undergrad experience at Lebanon Valley College, I had a lot of experience and had been involved with lots of wonderful mentors in music. Um, I spent almost 14 years teaching public schools uh, in Maryland and uh, Pennsylvania and uh, New York City. And so when I actually came back to school for the master's degree, that was a, a breakthrough moment because as I shared earlier, I began in piano performance and it didn't take me long to realize that it was just me and the piano. And after teaching for four years, I realized I missed the kids. And so when I thought about those things that really enabled me to make positive connections with others, I thought, well, it really is teaching. It really is choral conducting. Maybe I need to look at this conducting thing a little bit more seriously. Didn't mean that I stopped playing or studying piano and eventually organ, but all those skills have uh, come to fore and served me well as my career has progressed. Um, when I came back to school in 91 to pursue the PhD, it was really as a result of a prompt by my mother who said to me, so what about that PhD? And I thought, oh my God, here we go. And so um, Penn State at that time was um, facing out the EDD or the DED in music education and instituting the PhD in music education. So that meant I would have more options um, in that I could combine the research component from music ed and also the artistic component from choral conducting. So choral conducting and literature became my cognate for the degree. All along the way, uh, I've always had a church job. I was either teaching piano or organ or voice privately, so I had a studio operation. And um, when I came back to school for the doctorate, very focused because I said, this is going to be harder than anything I've ever done. But I got this invitation from the Forum on Black Affairs to do music for the annual uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Banquet. And I said, I can do that, but I don't have a choir. And 23 singers that I invited from Penn State choirs at that time became the first edition of Essence of Joy. Even then, I had no inclination 
that I would eventually be offered a faculty appointment or that Essence of Joy would become Music 93. So in hindsight, I'm glad that I accepted that invitation because the rest of my professional career has been shaped around uh, events with Essence of Joy. Um, the choir has become my calling card to the choral profession, um, not only on campus, but beyond, especially with professional organizations. Um, and now the Essence of Joy family consists of what I call the resident choir, which are the kids on campus, the uh, community choir, which is called Essence Two, that I launched in 1999, and then in 2005 launched the Essence of Joy alumni singers. So I am busy with artistic leadership with those three, three groups. Both degrees involve very meaningful and significant relationships with mentors. During the master's degree, uh, Doug Miller um, was my primary teacher as far as um, choral conducting and choral literature was concerned, and Raymond Brown was director of choral activities. I gleaned a ton from both men, very, very, very different in their approach to facilitating music but I learned that I needed to take from them what I felt I needed to absorb at the time and, and make that a part of my philosophy or my approach. Um, in the PhD program, Keith Thompson was my primary advisor for my dissertation, and I also had several, several general music type classes with Keith. Um, Doug Miller also, of course, was still on board for my choral conducting and choral literature. And eventually, Lynn Jerry Fall, uh, who came on board during my second year of the PhD, she also served on my dissertation committee. So my, my mentors were pivotal in recognizing not only my potential as far as being able to um, function at this college university level, but also what I was bringing regarding choral conducting and choral music education and, and leadership with choirs. I, I, I could not, because I wasn't looking for a job when it occurred to me through conversation with uh, La Merriman, who was director of the School of Music back in the early 90s, that they were looking at me as for a potential faculty appointment. Uh, I thought, hmm because I was on leave from my job in Silver Spring, Maryland, and uh, they gave me three years of leave to finish coursework and hopefully get the degree done so I could go back. Well, uh, in 94, they said, are you coming back? And I said, well, I think I'll stay at Penn State and pursue this academic appointment. But the deal is, all along the way, um, people that were in the School of Music faculty um, paid attention to me, I really paid attention to what they were encouraging me to think about and also providing opportunities for me to teach courses um, uh, in conducting and in music education to work with student teachers to actually coordinate the student teaching program for uh, many, many, many years while finishing my, my dissertation. So uh, all in all, I, I've, I've said before, but I'll say it again, Penn State made room for my gifts in music and music education. Um, and so it's been wonderful allowing all that stuff to come together in a cohesive embrace of me as a person and helping others to figure out their passion and their voice within various musical contexts. I tell all of them, whether they're undergrad or grad, and even remind my alumni as they check in, eyes and ears open, mouth closed, so that whatever's coming at you, you can encounter it as opposed to reacting to it. Because sometimes the reaction needs to occur after the action. If you write an email and don't think about it, especially from an emotional perspective, it may end up where you don't want it to end up. So maybe you need to write that email, erase it, and then write it again. Or before you say something that you can't take back, think, think, and you will find that you, you will 
be far more successful and far more sensitive to what's going on around you so that when you do respond, you are uh, more in control of yourself and, and aspects of that situation. Through both degrees, I, I carried into the degree that wonderful, those wonderful years of teaching, especially when I began the PhD. Um, as, I, as I shared earlier, by then I had taught for 14 years in a variety of settings. And so I was really uh, hungry for things in academia that would inform my perspective as a teacher and um, as a musician. So I really had a good time in my coursework except in statistics. That was a lot of work, but, you know, that's okay. I passed the courses. But all the things that I did in music and with um, music literature and conducting and listening and ultimately... Um, teaching courses with undergraduate students, because that's the first that I had had that kind of uh, experience, uh, really helped me to be very, very, very clear in my expectations of students and then my preparation to uh, create encounters for them to make positive connections. Um, I haven't taught to date. I have never taught a class the same way because each group of students is new. Now the content is the same, but how I deliver it really changes with each group of students, whether it's graduate or undergraduate, so that when they come away, it's their encounter, not my encounter. I, I'm just a conduit, uh, kind of you know, helping them to see, to hear, to listen, to pay attention to a whole lot of cues. Sometimes those cues are verbal, sometimes those cues are through their research or papers that they write or, or music that they hear. But um, it's, been, it's been wonderful and a real challenge for me every year, even though I know what I'm going to be teaching, how am I going to do it so that they really connect in a way that their experience is informed and, and engaging.